Hi there, I'm Ling. Today, I'm gonna read the topic: the benefits of daydreaming. Let's go. On a daily basis, you spend between a third and half your waking hours daydreaming. That may sound like a huge waste of time, but scientists think it must have some purpose, or human wouldn't have evolved to do so much of it. So, to figure out what's going on here, let's take a closer look at the mind wanderer in chief, the bored teenager. Wouldn't it be cool to discover something, anything, like even this plant, just to be one of those explorers who sailed around drawing stuffs for years on end, and everyone thinks they're a genius. But does anyone even do that anymore? Is there anything left to discover? And would I be tough enough to deal with dysentery, or scurvy, or piranhas, or whatever? I barely have the endurance to make it through track practice, but I will. Any day now, I'll have the discipline to show up before sunrise and practice. I'll win all my race. Winning will become so easy. I'll pick up other events just for fun. And once I'm in the Olympic, they will have no choice but to crown me team captain, which I will graciously accept. And will I be nasty to the teammate who yelled at me? No, I'll just calmly say, "Hope you're in a better mood." Okay, yours and other people's daydreamings might sound or feel something like that. Let's see what was going on here. To see what parts of the brain are active when you're doing a task, or thinking, or daydreaming, scientists use brain imaging techniques that show increased blood blood flows and energy expenditure in those areas. These brain areas are active, working together and communicating with each other. Taken together, they are called the executive network. When your mind starts to wander. A different set of brain areas becomes active. These areas make up the default mode network. The name default mode makes it sound like nothing is going on, and in fact, for many years, scientists associated these patterns of activity with rest. But a closer look reveals that these are the brain area involved when we revisit a memory, when we think about our plans and hopes, and yes. When our minds are wandering off on a wild daydream, the mind can wander to unproductive or distressing places and brood over negative past events, like an argument. It can also wander to neutral, everyday matters, like planning out the rest of one's afternoon. But where mind wandering really gets interesting is when it crosses into the realm of free-moving associative. Thought that you aren't consciously directing. This kind of mind, mind wandering is associated with increase in both ideas and positive emotions. And the evidence suggests that daydreaming can help people envision ways to reach their goals and navigate relationship and social situations. Scientists. Scientists think there are maybe two essential parts to this process: a generative phase of free-flowing ideas and spontaneous thoughts, courtesy of the default mode network, followed by a process of selecting, developing, and pursuing the best idea from that generated burst, driven by the lo logical thinking thanks to the executive network. A host of imaging studies suggest. That these two networks working in sync is a crucial condition for creative thinking. Taken together, the evidence clearly suggests that local logical realm of the executive network and the imaginative realm of the default mode network are closely related. And as you can see, the executive network is still playing a role when the default mode network is doing its thing during daydreaming. In teenagers. Prefrontal cortex and other areas involved in executive function are still developing, but teens are perfectly capable of thinking through their problems and goals, especially when given space to do so on their own. I'm Ling. Thank you and have a nice day. Goodbye.